Hey, welcome back. We're going to talk about filing your metal today. So after you have chosen your design, after you have sought out your piercings, after you have sought out your outside shape, after you have done any of that texturing, you'll realize that the edges of your metal might be a little rough and there may be areas where you were off with your sawing and you think, you know what, I need to clean that up. So the saw, the files are what you're going to use for that. They're found in cabinet two and these are the, the choices that you have for filing and filing is just really working with the edges of your metal. So you've got some blue handled files that are larger in two different shapes. Equalizing file which is flat on both sides and then you have a half round file which is the most versatile file. It's half round or round on one side and flat on the other side. You might also come across a file that doesn't have a blue handle on that. Those should, shouldn't be in the cabinet, but if they are, um, come get a blue handle for that one or just get it back to me. And some of the files have a rougher grit on them. So this half round file has a rougher grit. It's going to be more aggressive when you're filing. So if you have a larger area of metal to file down, you want to find a rougher grit file to use. If you just have a little bit to take off, um, then a finer grit would work just fine. You might also come across these. These are located in this um, tin can and cabinet too. These don't need, need the blue handle for that because they're not sharp. And these are rougher than the ones that have the blue handle on them. You want to pick the largest file for what you're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this rougher half round file right here. And I'm going to work on the V-board. I don't want you guys working in your lap. I don't want you working on the table. Please work in the V-board because it allows you the most control and the most support. If I am working on a curve, I'm going to choose a curved kind of file, especially a concave curve. The longest filing stroke is the best. You're always filing away from yourself towards your solid surface and I'm bracing this, the more kind of pressure you can get in that file, file, the faster that will file down. If you do this, you'll be here for about 15 class periods and not get anywhere. So you want to be real intentional with your filing. And the longer the stroke, the smoother that file is. Ideally, you take your file, you exit against your metal, brace it, and then begin your filing. These files only file in one direction, so I'm actually with the pushing stroke filing down, and then I'm lifting up as I come back. If I file this way, which is tempting, what I'm doing is I'm filing the metal, dulling the file, filing the metal, dulling the file. So I'm just basically putting twice the amount of work in um, that I need to. So push and stroke, lift up, and then you're going to evaluate right here. There are times when you're pretty far off from your design, so you may end up wanting to take a, you know, the, the template that you had, or you may want to take a ruler and draw where you need to file to with a Sharpie marker or you can just keep double checking it by eye. The goal is, is that if I were to run my fingernail along here, I would not catch on anything because sometimes if your sawing is a little rough, you'll have these little jagged edges on here and the goal with your surfaces is to have it smooth and consistent where you don't see evidence of any filing and then you won't see any evidence of any um, sawing or you won't see any evidence of em any emery work. If you come to a surface that is a little bit smaller than you would need for one of these larger files, for example, I'm not going to be able to get into this area right here with this large file, I would go ahead and pick one of the diamond files, the smaller needle files we have. And the nice thing about the needle files is because it is a diamond grit, and I'm pulling a triangular file here to get into this corner, because it is a diamond grit, it files both directions. Come in here. And I've got a little bit of a curve here, so I would need a half round to do that.
and I'm in the habit of just lifting as I come back. So sometimes it's not as easy to go back and forth, but sometimes you can. So I'm gonna go back and forth right here with my pressure. And they're going to, sometimes you'll find that supporting it in the, the middle of this V on the, the V board doesn't work so well. I might have a large flat surface that I need to file. So in order to do that, I have a couple of options. This doesn't really work so well bracing it right here. So I might decide to brace it up against my V board this way and file across. Again, I'm filing, lift up, filing, lift up. I could just as easily go here. Temptation is to hold it in your hand and file like this you're just spending twice the amount of energy to get done what you need to do. There's also a time and a place for taking the file and putting it upside down and then moving your material against the file. And yep, it's going to make some of those noises sometimes and that's, it just is what it is. So I'm bringing this back towards the handle. When I have it this way, I'm, the file stroke is towards that direction away from your body. Largest file to do the job. We have the hand, large hand files here. The diamond files are kept in these, and these are on the corner of the teacher desk. There are also times when you find that you need to get into areas that are even too small for this. And I, in you know something like this design, that would be a case for perhaps using the diamond bits on the Fordham to be able to get in there because they do have. some different sizes that allow you to get in there. However, the temptation is to just push hard to go file that. And it's just a really light touch on the Fordham. And it doesn't, it's not very aggressive. So the more you can do with the hand files and the cleaner your sawing is, the better off that you are with that. If you have an outside curve right here, if you have an outside curve, the temptation is to think, you know, it's a curve, I need to use a curve. But if I put a curve to a curve, so I have a convex curve, and I'm filing it with a curve, I don't have a lot of contact there. So you will get more contact on a convex curve if I use a flat part of the file. Once you've determined that you have all of your edges the way that you want them, and I get back to kind of figuring out my symmetry on this one, then you're ready to move on to the surface work, and that's where we're going to head next with the emery. Until next time, bye-bye.